All right, guys, welcome back to another Unreal tutorial. In this one, well, the genesis of this video came from my Discord group. Uh, and if you haven't already joined the Discord community, I highly suggest you join there. We show examples of each other's work, get and give each other help, and have some really good chats. And one of the chat was, is there a way to feed in your monitor into an Unreal environment? And that's what I'm gonna walk you through how to actually do that uh, today. Why don't we go ahead and create a third person environment and just use all the standard default settings. Uh, what you can see behind is a VR template and we'll come back to that a little bit later in the video, but let's go ahead and start this. So we'll talk about my um, HDMI training. All right, we'll just create a default name. Okay, now we have a new environment opened up. The shaders are compiling. By the way, I am running Unreal version 5.1. You probably saw that in the title, and I really like the way the new shaders work. But what I wanna show you is how to use an Elgato cam link to feed an HDMI signal into your environment. Now, before I start creating anything in this environment and show you how to do the integration, let me just explain the concept. Uh, <laughs> world's most powerful graphics tool, Microsoft Paint. Um, what I want to show you is I have an Elgato cam link. Imagine you have one as well if you're watching this video. And there's maybe three different use cases for it where I can actually take an HDMI signal and put it in my Unreal environment. I'm going to show you later on how to do that in a VR environment uh, with my MetaQuest goggles. But I'm going to start off by explaining this from a 2D, just a standard Unreal environment. So use case number one is my current NVIDIA card, which I actually have a 3080, I'll be installing a 4090 this week in a brand new PC build, but I've got a 3080 currently, and I've just taken the HDMI cable coming out of it and rerouted it back through an Elgato cam link. Now, why did I do that? Because I'm feeding in the signal of my second monitor, which you'll see. But I could also, in this use case, using again an HDMI cable, I could feed in a signal from another computer, an iPad with an HDMI cable, an iPhone with an HDMI cable, of course, uh, you know, another PC. So in terms of content, you could be streaming something from the internet, you could be doing this for virtual production, right? Let's say you've got a corporate event and you build a 3D environment for that and you wanna put a wall inside the environment and feed that coming from the web, uh, from any type of device, you could do that. And of course you could do a camera. So if you wanna put yourself or an actor into your environment, you could plug in a camera, which I do have, I'm just not showing it today, but I do have a Sony 6100 plugged into a cam link and I can feed that. A lot of people use that for virtual production where you've got a green screen and you've got some characters in front of that and you're chroma keying out the green screen and putting that in your environment. So three, use cases right here. So right now I'm gonna use this one right here where I'm going to take the output of my card through an HDMI cable, go back in. Now let me show you how easy this is to do. All right, now that we've got this environment, let's start off by creating a, uh, a new folder over here and we'll just call the new folder um, HDMI sources, all right? for lack of a better name. And in this folder, I'm gonna right click and I'm going to go to media and I'm gonna add the media player. So now we've got this media player object ready to get created. You do wanna check this box, video output media texture asset. That doesn't really make sense if you read it. So let me explain what that is. It's basically saying when I click okay, also make a texture for the media player. Epic, you should probably update that dialog box. Now I've created that, you'll see as I give it a name, we'll just call this the cam link. As soon as I hit enter, there's our texture. Okay, so we've got the texture. Now let's make a plane for our environment. We'll just, just go up to the uh, menu right here with the little box and the plus, which is where we can get to all of our different asset types. And we will go to shapes and create a plane. Now you will see that you need to rotate these planes. It's really interesting that they don't come in rotated the right way. Um, don't forget your shortcuts are up here. I have a Logitech 502 mouse, so I've put keystrokes on my 
uh, buttons basically to change these. So it's the same thing as me clicking here, here, and here, except I use my mouse buttons, which I find is a lot faster. I won't um, do two axis rotation. I'll just do one for right now. Let's see how it comes in. And now I've got this plane that I'm gonna put my desktop on. And let's pull that a little bit forward and just have it floating in space. All right. Now, double click on the media player, the one that I named Camlink, and you'll find that if you have movies in this folder, this is how you would specify a movie you wanna play on that texture, but check it out. And I show this in an earlier video of mine on the channel, but I never explain what these little gems are here for, but now you get to see that under here, we've got video and I can see all of my different inputs uh, and I'm gonna grab the cam link. It sees the cam link plugged into my computer and voila, there's my second monitor. So again, I have an HDMI cable coming out of my graphics card. It's plugged into the Elgato cam link, which is plugged into a USB port. And now when I hit save, I'm feeding my second monitor. I actually have three monitors, so I literally could have two different cam links and put two different. Now, this screen, I just have Microsoft Word on, but think about it. I could have a browser open and I could be streaming content in here for doing some cool show and tell. I could have a PowerPoint presentation running and I could drive a PowerPoint presentation in my environment. Maybe you wanna do some training or instructing and you want that fed. Uh, maybe you're like me and you're a VTuber and you're using a 3D character and that's your instructor. There's one uh, new member to my Discord channel and they are doing some corporate training. So a lot of different applications for feeding in this signal. Let me just minimize that and watch this. I'll drag, you can see it now, it popped up. I'll drag this onto the plane and the shader is going to render, material is going to get built and you'll notice it comes in sideways. I just don't know why that's the case, but I'm gonna hit a button on my mouse and then rotate it. If you don't have that mapped out, just these buttons right here. That's movement and that is rotation and that is sizing. So uh, let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And let's uh, appropriately scale it to the monitor. There you go. Um, there is a toolbar down below, but I have it set to auto pop up. Let me slide my mouse out the side. Let's see if I can get to that monitor. A little hard to see. Okay. So I, I'm, I'm sliding my mouse out of my Unreal environment over to my second monitor. Now I'm dropping down and popping the toolbar up. You can see that I'm also running OBS. That's running in monitor number three but this is the monitor that's running Microsoft Word. So that is fed into my environment. Let's come back over to the Unreal monitor, and there we go. So think of all the different applications for doing that. Uh, not a very exciting environment. I'm just using the standard template. So it's that easy, guys, to put in a signal to your environment. And let me pop over and show you what this looks like for VR. Now you'll notice in this project, I've created just a small VR environment using the standard template, but I added a plane on the wall and you'll see that if I go into the cam link here and change the video setting to be the cam link four, then you'll notice that my second monitor does in fact appear on this wall. And all I did was specify that and dragged the texture onto the wall. So pretty cool that I can even in an environment, a VR environment, uh, be able to feed in an HDMI signal and put that in the VR environment. All right, now we've got to do the finishing touches, which is we're going to need to create a blueprint. If you notice uh, my plane over here where the cam link is, it's black. And that's because if you just click play right now, you're going to see like this white screen or a black screen. If you notice when I go into the cam link again, it's almost like it forgot where the source was. And this is gonna happen. The only reason it was working before is that when I select this and hit save, I was minimizing the window. So it still was basically open defining where this is. But as soon as I click play in the game mode, which is whether you're doing this VR or 2D, it's gone. 
and no reason to panic. That's because we need to create a blueprint that says where this source is going to be from each time we run the environment. So let's click stop up here. And let me just walk you through this blueprint. Shouldn't be too difficult for you guys, especially if you watch some of my other videos. Um, but this is version 5.1, so some things have changed. Let's dive in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click over here and I'm gonna go in the content browser and grab a file media source. Even though we're pointing not to a file, but we're pointing to a media source, this is the right um, object to use. So we'll come right here. Now, if you go into Camlink and you choose the video, you'll notice there's a URL right here. I want you to select and drag and then right click and copy that string. Go ahead and click save and close the window because then in this new media file source, we're gonna put that in the file path. Again, it's not a file per se, but it is the path to where that is. And now we will click save there. And so now we have an asset that is serving as a container for where the path is. Now that we've done that, we can go and create our blueprint. So I'm gonna come up here and choose to open the level blueprint pretty much blank. Let's make it in this case, I mean, you could bind this to a key on your keyboard. You could actually bind this to a button on your stream deck if you have an Elgato stream deck. And I will link to the video where I made how to integrate your stream deck with your Unreal environment because that's a really cool way to launch things in your environment. But in this case, I'm just gonna do it when the level starts. So I'll right click right here and do event begin and you want to grab the event begin play node. That means start this when the level starts. Now we need to make some variables. So let me click plus over here on the variable side and we'll type media player. And the reason we're typing media player is I've got to specify cam link over here as the media player that I want to use. Now we don't want Boolean. That's like true false. So hit the drop down and type the word media and maybe hit player as well. So media player, and you'll see right here under object types, there's media player, choose that. Now, whenever you, I've shown this in other videos, whenever you um, specify a new variable, you can't put anything in there until you click on compile. And now I can specify the media player. To do that, I'll hit this drop down and I'll choose the cam link. So it knows all about the media players that I have inside the project and I'll click compile and save again. Now we need to open this source. So I'm gonna right click here and I'm gonna choose to open media or is it open source? Ah, great learning opportunity. You see this little checkbox right here, context sec sensitive, that always throws me. I'm gonna uncheck that and that shows you more. So media player open source. I wonder, remember I was saying open media player. Let's see if that would have worked. Mm, nope. To open source. That's the right way to do it. Under media player, grab that. Now we've got the right node there. Let's attach the event begin play to open source. Now we need to plug into the target right here what media player we're talking about. So pull out the media player from the left hand side choose get media player because we're feeding that information into the source we're not setting the value we're getting the value and so i just click that and drag it into the target and then this little drop down menu right here choose the new file media source that was if you look over here that's where we put in the url to the cam link all right so that's why we have that there and now if we click compile and save, I think we're good to go. Let's see. So I'm gonna close this window. I'm gonna click on play. Darn it. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna fix something else. This is the real world, baby. This is what happens to all of us developers. A little trial and error. I could have cut this out of the video and made it look like I did everything perfect, but let's, let's troubleshoot this together. Okay, so this is Dave from the future. I actually had to turn off recording for about 20 minutes and there is change to the workflow, but I figured it out. That's the good news. I figured it out and I hope you guys are watching this video all the way through. Um, notice when I click play, as you saw before, my monitor is not showing up here 
and I thought it would be enough to have this new file media source pointing to the cam link, but that was incorrect. Would have been fine if it was a file, but it's not a file. So what I figured out is go to the cam link and choose the video right here. When this comes up over here on the left, the media source, there's a little icon for saving the playlist. Click on that icon and that will give you a chance to create a new object called a uh, media source, stream media source. I'm gonna call this cam link source and click save. And then it's also asking me to save the other asset, which is the playlist, because you can have multiple objects, but we're only using one. So I'll call this the cam link playlist and click save. And so it's added these two additional elements uh, in the list. I'm gonna click save, click close on this window, and I'm gonna go back to the blueprint just to double check. And inside the blueprint, notice says media source, select asset, and that's because I've changed things around. Choose the stream media source, whatever you called it, choose the one called stream media source, click compile, click save, and now let's cross our fingers again, click play, there we are. And now we have the monitor in the window. I'm gonna hit Alt tab, push my mouse over to the second window, drop down to the taskbar, and you can see that I am running in the game environment with my monitor working. I wonder if I can just try to get my mouse. I can't see the monitor. Uh, there, I'm using Microsoft Word. This is my second monitor. So you know this is happening in real time. I'm glad, you know, I'm, I'm glad I showed you guys uh, that nobody's perfect and we have to figure this stuff out. Things change between 5.0 and 5.1, different versions. So the trick was not using this new file source right here, uh, as I said earlier, but it was to actually come into the cam link, choose the cam link and click over here, save to create a streaming media source property. And that solved it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. I think it was maybe nice for us to figure out that nobody's perfect and this thing, uh, you know, figuring out the stuff. Like I always say, none of us are smarter than all of us. And I'm glad you guys were patient. Watch the video all the way through. And I would love to hear in the comments, like, do you think this, this use case of feeding video into your environments, something you're going to do with it, something you're not, let me know. We'll catch you guys on the next episode.